Hi, I'm Andrew, alumni from Team 8417, and this printer that we have here is the Cheetah X Plus. This one's in the 650-ish dollar range, and let's go ahead and get it open. All right, so on top we have what looks like the print bed and some manuals, a few things like that. There's also a ruled spool of PLA filament. I believe it's random color. We got red. And there's the secondary hot end, which is a, I believe all stainless steel version. So it can go super high temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius to print those super hot filaments. There's an ethernet cord, which is one of the ways you can connect it to your computer. A print scraper to get prints off the print bed. Power cable. It's like one of the filament spool holder options. This looks like the other filament spool holder option. A couple other bits and bobs, some tools. Comes with a screwdriver. A couple other small tools useful for working on the machine. And lastly, some more instructions to install the different extruder assemblies that come with this printer. This is more of a two-person job. Looks like that's it in the box. So this printer comes fully assembled. This step is Andrew taking off a bunch of the packaging material. Now there is a lot in there, so you just need to take your time and be patient. It shouldn't take that long, just a few minutes. That's what it took Andrew. You have a USB drive. Glue stick to helping prints adhere to the mm -hmm. lid. And I believe that's it. So, this printer, you'll notice, is already put together. Now the only thing remaining is to add the, the filament holder and some filament to it. So, that is because this is a closed printer, meaning both it has an enclosure and it is not an open source. So, it's a little bit more difficult to repair and the firmware is all private and can't really be upgraded as easily. The advantages to this one, it is able to reach extremely high temperatures. The extruder can reach up to 300 degrees Celsius and the bed can go up to 100, 110 degrees Celsius, meaning you can print extremely high temperature and high durability filaments like nylon polycarbonate and carbon fiber, which are extremely tough filaments. You need something with just a little extra strength. And it also comes with a relatively large print bed. It is pretty wide and it also has this cap and a little bit of a ventilation system. I mean, you can print the smelly filaments like ABS without having to worry too much about the fumes. Pretty easy setup. Plug it in and run your print. So I missed a little something unboxing the Cheetah Tech printer. In the bottom of the box, hidden amongst the styrofoam, packaging were these two side plates. They just magnetize onto the sides of the printer, just like that. They stick in there, and that fully encloses the printer, except for the little hole at the back for the filament to go into. So it is an enclosed printer, which does also help it with avoiding warping on those super high temperature filaments. So this printer does not have an auto bed leveling system, meaning you have to manually level it yourself. I did it, it's pretty easy to do. It actually comes with this sweet little paper that shows you how to do it, as well as in the menus here. It also tells you how on the touch screen. It's pretty easy to do, and so it can just like a couple of minutes. The next part of the video is pros and cons. The two biggest cons that we touch on are upgradeability and repairability. The enclosed system restricts your ability to upgrade or repair the printer. It comes with a second hot end, which is meant for super high temperature filaments like nylon, polycarbonate, carbon fiber. So it can do those, but that's about the only upgrade you're gonna get out of this. If something breaks, it's gonna be a bit harder to fix than an open source printer. Pros of this is definitely this enclosure, which it does have an air filtering system. It's not the greatest air filtering system, but it is enough to print smelly and fumy filaments like polycarbonate or ABS. And it has this sweet door on the front to get your prints back out. It has a very large print bed, so you can print a little bit bigger parts than some other printers. 
it does come directly from China, or at least the one we got did, so we did have to pay some customs, but it's still a little bit cheaper than here. US. The other thing I don't like too much about it, is the spool folders. It's got two options, one in there and one up here. Both of them are a little funky, at least for the filament path. When you're printing PLA, you don't need this top on, because it's not gonna smell. And so, it's a little bit better, but you can see it's already falling off the spool there. You can definitely 3D print and maybe wall mount some better ones. That's another upgrade you can do. The ease of use of this printer is actually great. Once I plugged it in and hit play on just the included test print, which is this one right here, it just went. I didn't really have to do much after I leveled the bed and clicked play. It came out looking really solid, very high quality print. It's definitely a great printer. I also tested out the slicer. A slicer is essentially just a printing software that deals with high speed prints. On this one, also came out great. It was a solid printer, but it does have its cons. The cost of this one is kind of middle of the range. I believe this one was $650 US, but this is also a great printer in a school setting where it's enclosed. You're a lot less likely to have somebody get burnt by accidentally knocking it and getting caught in or something. So that is the advantage of the enclosure. All in all, I was very pleasantly surprised by this printer. I never heard of them before, but it's a super high quality printer. It can do a lot of things and it does them really well. So a good printer, especially for the price.